Hello everyone, my name is Chris Kim and in this video we're going to learn how states work with the Beaker Framework. The algorithm blockchain has three types of states, global state, local state, and box storage. In this video we're going to cover global state and local state, and box storage will be covered in a later video. With Beaker it's much easier to customize and keep track of all of the states you want in your smart contract. Also, Beaker creates an extensive ABI that includes state information that the front end can use and reference when interacting with the smart contract. Global state is state that is recorded on the smart contract. It is usually used to keep track of data used by the application and doesn't have to vary per account that interact with the smart contract. Local state, on the other hand, is recorded on accounts and each account can have their own unique local state. It is often used to keep track of data specific to each account but the account can always forcefully erase local state by sending a clear state application transaction. So local state is not best suited for states that are core to the application's functionality. For this, I recommend using the box storage. There are three types of global states in Beaker. The global state value, reserved global state, and global state blob. Global state value is a normal state that holds one value. The reserved global state is a dictionary-like state where you can store multiple key value pairs. It's best to use this when there should be a number of reserved states, but the keys to the values are uncertain at build time. Global state blob lets you write buffers to a byte array, and it's best used to store large data into one huge byte array. Let's go through each one and see what they are. First, let's see how you would use a global state value in a smart contract. Here in line 5, we are defining a class called global state and has one global state value called my description defined in there. Now when you're creating this global state value, you can define some attributes. For stack type, this global state is set to teal type dot bytes. So whatever value that's held in this state will be a byte value. Default is set to a byte value of Chris is the best. So that will be the value this global state will have once the global state is initialized. And static is set to true. So once this global state is initialized, it cannot change its value. Line 13, we're instantiating the application class where the name of the smart contract is global state value. And we're passing in an instance of the global state class as a second argument. So this application class can have access to all of the states that are defined in the global state class. Now here we're applying a blueprint function unconditional create approval. So this code right here will initialize the my description global state to the default value Chris is the best. All right, coming down here, we have two external methods. One set app state val, where you pass in a value as an argument. Here we're passing in a string value, and it's going to set the argument into the my description state by doing app.state.myDescription.set, and we're getting the value from the v argument that we pass in. Now to read that value, we're going to call the get app state val. This is going to output an ABI string value. And to read the global state, all you need to do is app.state.myDescription. And that will read whatever value that is held in the global state. And we're going to set that value to the output so that once we return this output, you can use this value outside of the smart contract. So that's the entire smart contract. Now let's go to this global state deploy file where we are creating the application and calling the two external methods. So here we're building the application here and writing out the artifacts into the artifacts folder. We're going to set up the application client here and we're going to use that app client to create the smart contract. And then down here, we're using the app client again to call the set app state val method where we're passing in the value as Chris is the worst. But remember, quickly going back to the smart contract, the my description global state is static. So the value cannot change. But this method set app state val is trying to change the state of my description. So here we're going to try calling that with a new value but we expect it to fail and print out this error message. And down here, we're going to call the read method to read the global state and print it out. So let's head to the terminal and run this file. To do so, I'm just gonna do Python 3 deploy. And there you go, that created the application and we got the error message as expected because the state is static and we got the app state Chris is the best, which is the default state that we set during creation. Moving on to reserved global state. Here in line five, we're defining the class reserved global state. 
and it has one reserved global state value defined in there called names. And for this reserved global state, we're setting stack type equal to teal type dot bytes, so the value will be bytes value. Max key is set to 32, so that's the maximum amount of key value pairs that you can have in this reserved global state. And the description explaining what this is. So as a reminder, reserved global state is like a dictionary type of state where you can hold multiple key value pairs. And in this case, the maximum key value pairs is 32. In line 13, we're instantiating the application class with the name reserved global state app. And we're passing in the reserved global state instance as a second argument so that this application can have access to the states in this class. This smart contract also has two external methods, one to set the reserved state and one to read the reserved state. And to set a reserved state, you do app.state.names, which is the name of the reserved state. And we pass in the key value in the bracket. Now for reserved global state, the key value must be an ABI type or a byte value. If you want to use a UN64 type as your key, you want to use the I2B PyTeal function to change the UN64 value to a byte value. And then we're doing dot set on that and we're getting the value from the V argument and we're setting the value into the reserve state with this key value. And to read a reserve state, you want to pass in the key value as an argument. And to read it, you do app.state.names and you pass in the key value as a bracket. Now in this case, this key value is a UN64 type, but it's an ABI type. Hence why you can use this UN64 type as the key for this reserve state. And Beaker will handle the encoding for you. Uh, this is outputting an ABI string type. So whatever value we get by reading, this name's reserve state, we're setting that to the output. All right, going to the deploy file. Again, we have some code that's going to create and call the functions. So we're going to build the app and write out the artifacts in the artifacts folder, create the application client, use the application client to create the app, and then call the set reserved app state val method with the key value one and value as Chris. And we're calling it twice and for the second time with key set to two and value set to Ben. So now we should have two key value pairs in this reserved global state. Then down here, we're using the app client again to call the get reserved app state val, which will read the reserved state. And we're passing in the key values as an argument. And we're going to print out the result here in the terminal. All right, now let's go to the terminal and run this file. To do that, just do Python 3 and run the deploy pi file. And just like that, it created the app and we can see that the state with key one is Chris and key two is Ben, which is the correct output. Last but not least, the global state blob. Here in line five, we're defining a class called app state. And here we're creating a global state blob and assigning it to global blob variable. Now global state blob is basically a gigantic byte array where you can store all sorts of bytes into that byte array. This global state blob has two keys. And if you need to store more bytes, then you can increase the keys up to 64 keys. Each keys can store up to 127 bytes and keys take up one byte. In line 11, we're instantiating the application class to create the application called global blob app. And we're passing in the instance of the app state class as a second argument to have access to the global state blob. We're applying a blueprint function called unconditional create approval. So during creation, we're going to initialize the global state. Now we need to initialize the global state in order to use the global state blob because we need to create that empty byte array before we start storing things in there. So here, since this global state blob can hold up to two keys, that will be fixed and initialized during creation. So make sure you create the blob large enough before you create the application. Down here, we have two external methods to write and read the global blob. And to write on the global blob, you have to pass in two arguments, a UN64 type that specify what index you want to start writing and the value that you want to write. So here, to write it, you do app.state.globalblob, just like how you would access any other global state. And you use this write method. 
And for the first argument of the write method, you write the start index of where you want to write the buffer. And for the second argument, you pass in the buffer that you want to write in the blob. Now to read the global blob, you access the global blob by doing app.state.globalblob, and you use the read method this time. And it takes in two arguments, the start index and the stop index. So this is saying, hey, I want to read from this index to that index. So here I'm going to read from int zero up to app.state.globalblob.blob.maxbytes minus int one. So that'll be the index where the buffer that I write in the blob ends. So that's the smart contract. Now let's go to the deploy file. And we're doing the same thing again. We are building and writing out the artifacts. We're using the app client to create the application. And we're going to call the write app blob with the app client. And we're going to start from zero index and write the value Chris likes ice cream. And we're going to use the app client again to read the global blob. And we're going to print out that result here. Now going to the terminal, let's run the deploy file. And once I do, it created the application and it printed out Chris likes ice cream. Now the video is getting too long, so I'm going to cut here and let's continue on in the next video.